everyone and welcome. I'd like to take an opportunity to uh, take a little tour through my second grimoire. Um, like I said in the previous vi video, I do have four grimoires right now. Um, these are all informational type um, of books. Um, again, I made this out of a three ring binder uh, with the same technique as the last star, a nice little uh, sacred geometry in the middle. Um, I was even able to uh, imitate a old time binding on the end and the back. If you look very closely, you can almost see a green man. Not quite, but almost. Um, it could be either way. So, anyway, I like this one much better. Um, I hope to redo the first one to look something in a similar style to this. Um, but anyway, let's go. Let's open this up. So, as you can already see, uh, by the title page, uh, this one, this Grimoire speaks exclusively of gods and goddesses. So this is an information book. This is going to have a lot of detailed information, uh, both with my teachings, my experiences, articles I've pulled off the internet that I just don't want to, you know, uh, re-look up, I guess. Um, information from classes I've taken, um, anything that I would use um, to build uh, ritual material. Uh, so this goes beyond just a short summary um, for each god and goddess. This is more in depth. Now, not all these pages will have information. Um, I do have all the gods and goddesses that I want to research, that I want to work with, um, that I want to find out more about. Um, so those who I have not worked with will not have entries until I do so. So you're going to see quite a few entries that are blank. Um, I have utilized some uh, uh, pre-published materials. Um, I, I picked up a coloring book for the goddesses. So you're going to see a lot of those pages in here. And some images off the internet that I've recolored, redone, revamped for my book. Um, a lot of the artwork... Um, is, is off the internet um, and we'll kind of discuss that as we go. I'm going to try to keep this uh, video a lot shorter than my last one since this is um, kind of a, a big heavy reference book but this will give you an idea of what I keep in here. So anyway so it starts out with some information about basic Celtic deities. Um, this was an article I take taken off and this just talks about their thought process, the Celts' thought processes when it comes to deities, gods, and goddesses. Um, and then for each section that I have in the book, I've included a, a reprint or a print of an ancient map of the area that this, these gods and goddesses would have come from or were worshipped and revered, revered by. Um, so here we have... Uh, this is just a general picture of um, old time world as we know it um, with all kinds of sea monsters in the ocean. Um, I, I really like this and this is how we're going to start the book. And so then we go to the next page and we start having a look at the region where the Celts were the most prominent. And again, this is an old map, so this won't show um, exact areas. Um, again, this, this gives you an idea of what area we're talking about, where these gods and goddesses were worshipped, and gives you a kind of a mindset of what people are thinking about. And so then we have a little information about Celtic values, why the gods and goddesses were important to them. And then we go into the individual gods and so here we have Log, um, and then we have some information about him, the pages, I have an article. And this is pretty much what you're going to see in every section. Um, so you can see there's a lot of writing, a lot of detail. It's not as visually pleasing, but it's not meant to be. Um, here's what happens when you use marker on parchment. 
I wouldn't recommend it. And so I've since changed to colored pencil. It works much better. And I think it gives a better depth and better look at the pages too. So I'm not going to rechange it because, you know, these are my work. This is my journey. Um, and it should be reflected in the book. Um, my books by no means are going to be perfect. And they will retain all the information that I learn, that I use and practice, regardless as my practice has changed. Um, you know, it's the journey. So, and that's what we're documenting is the journey. And so then I have some information uh, about Brig here. I found another article on her and it has some chants um, and some odes to her that I could use in the future. And of course, since I have the article, I can also cite it in my ritual, ritual work as needed. And so we have Kronos, and we have his information, and then we have a charge dedicated just to him that I use here. Um, and then at some time, at some point, we're going to look at Aaron Hood. And if I mispronounce these gods and goddesses, please excuse me. Um, yeah, it's all learning process. Nipona. Yeah, most of us know who she is. Carmen. And got some information about her. Uh, and then... Daniel and Bile. Now, Bile is a primordial um, god, so I may move um, this god um, to uh, another section where the pri more primordial gods are. Um, it's something I'm considering, but I haven't decided. Uh, but this god is very prevalent in Celtic religion, so I've just kind of kept uh, Bile in there. And, of course, we have St. Patrick, um, some pagans... Um, uh, work with him. Some do not. Um, it's all your perspective. I look at the gods and goddesses and those uh, we take lessons from to be both uh, positive influences and negative influences in our lives. And we should know about all of them. It gives us history. It gives us purpose. Uh, knowledge is power. Um, so I'm not afraid to have him in my books. Um, and so there he is. And I will be doing some work with him and finding out his mindset, his history, and just kind of confirm what I've already know. Um, as most of you know, uh, there were no snakes in Ireland, um, and so there were no snakes to run out of Ireland. He was running the pagans out. So there's a little backstory for um, Mr. Uh, St. Patrick. Uh, but I would like to know more about him and the better aspects of him. Um, because, you know, everyone has good and bad in their life. Everyone makes mistakes. And so let's embrace them. And that's how I live. So, and then right after that, we have Morgana. And then we have a new section. And of course, I still use these lovely dividers. I love these. I know they're not natural. Um, but, you know, they're sturdy. They're practical. And I'm all about that. And I'm all about reuse. Um, these were used in a different um, notebook at one time and a divider. They were thrown away. I saved them. They're not in a landfill anymore. Uh, I have no worries about reusing them. And so the next section we're going to go into is um, the Roman Empire and the Roman gods and goddesses. And here I have a genealogical chart of all the Roman gods and goddesses. It's hard to read because the print is very small. Um, this was originally, um, uh, the original you can buy on a poster and it's very large poster and the writing is still very small on it. Um, I just redid it in smaller type font to get it on one page for my book because that's how we roll. And then we have uh, the Kabbalah in reference to the Roman gods and goddesses and their uh, beliefs. And then we have a little article about the Roman Empire, uh, about forming the myth, histories. And then we have a summary of all the Roman gods and goddesses. And this is actually about 10 pages long. 
And these summaries are only one sentence long. So that's a lot of gods and goddesses the Romans had. Now, if anyone knows about gods and goddesses, the Romans uh, took a lot of the gods and goddesses from other uh, pagan religions and made them their own as part of indoctrinating them into the indoctrinating those they conquered into their empire uh, to give them some connectedness. So you're going to see a ton of Roman gods and goddesses uh, when you do research on them. Um, I probably won't work with as many because I will probably work with more of an original set subset. And again, this is um, the Roman Empire. At the time, we were worshiping uh, the gods and goddesses that we talk about. Uh, this is a little exercise I did for one of my classes. And then we talk about Juno, Sybil. We have my information. We have information that I found off the internet about her. Um, information about research and how much is viable and how much um, we can actually trace back. Um, I think that's important for understanding the gods and goddesses as well. Uh, how much information do we really know? Are we just guessing? Or do we actually have some kind of documentation? Whether it's statues or locations or you know primitive you know, scribblings on walls or paintings, you know how much proof do we have that this was a legitimate god and goddess? And I find that um, journey quite interesting too, because you know at some point the history we do it wasn't in writing; it was all oral tradition or painting or other expressions. So it makes it a lot more difficult. And so then we have Fortuna, which most of you know is the Greek god, the Roman god of prosperity. And yes, I have worked with her. And there's some information there. And then we have Vesta. And Pomona. And we have Venus. And Diana. And that's probably all I'm going to really work with the Roman um, gods and goddesses because they're most prevalent in the pagan communities. And I want to have a little uh, backstory with them to get the connection. And so then we go on to the Greeks. I love the Greek um, Pathenon. Um, so you're going to see a lot more Greek entries and a lot more information about the Greeks here. Again, here is kind of their family tree where everyone came from. It gives you a really good idea of what's going on with the Greek gods and goddesses, why they're doing things, and what kind of traits they have received from their parents. And so then we talk about ancient Greece. Uh, religion and mythology. Um, and then we talk about the festivals, uh, morality, sacred texts, ceremonies, um, their sacrifices, rites of passage, mystery religions, and some of their history here. And this is the Greek Empire, and you can see all that colored area is actually Greek territory. So they didn't actually just have Greek proper. They had the, every land that's surrounding the Mediterranean, which I find very fascinating. <clears throat> so then we have um, a little, some sheets here on the summaries of the Greek gods in different categories. And this is just kind of a summary page of all of them. And the Greeks did have quite a few. Now these do include some of um, the creatures, mythical creatures as well. So these not all gods and goddesses necessarily. So we break them in a different, down into different kinds. And this is all of how they were worshiped. Um, this includes noble women, kings. So there's a lot of information here. Um, which I find very interesting. Um, and I just, I just love the history of finding out about gods and goddesses. So then the next sheet we have Apollo. 
and you got this information. And I do have a picture of Apollo here somewhere. He's just not in order. I'm not sure why, but we'll have to fix that eventually. And there he is. Good old Apollo there. And then we found a great article on him. And yeah, I didn't get this on parchment. At the time I printed this off, I was out of parchment. So it just went on white paper. And I just really never got it transposed to parchment. Um, some more information from online that I found. Um, we have a hymn to Apollo that I found and really connected with. So that's in here as well. And we need to move this on. And so then we have Hades, who I have worked with as well. Again, the same setup, some of my information, articles, information on him. Um, I had him on my altar at one time. This is the picture I used. So, and then we have Kronos, good old father time. Information on him. All right. The Poseidon. Now, I did color him in. Um, I did make him pretty. And as you can see, at one time, I was doing cre great little borders in here. I'll probably go back to doing that eventually. Um, but there's just some information. Um, and I'm in a couple classes that are really fast paced and I just need to keep up with it. And I'd rather information be in my book um, rather than um, prettified. I can always go back and make them pretty. And so then we have Athena. And I printed these off light on purpose so I can go back in and color them at a later date and make them mine. Um, again, more Athena. Um, I really love the story of Athena. Um, so she'll probably see someone I'll work with a lot here in, in due time. The meter. And that's more Demeter. We have Gia, Earth God. And really, we can make her either Greek or Celtic. Um, they both believed in aspects of her. Hecatate. And everyone knows about Hecatate. And Aphrodite. Eos, which is a sun goddess. And of course, we have Psyche and Eros, or Cupid, you may know him by. And there's Gia again. So like I said, you know, I, I have to move the stuff around a little bit. Um, but there is. And then um, with the Greeks come all kinds of wonderful creatures um, in their myths and stories. So it's always good to know who they are, what they stand for, what their attributes are, and how they interact with the myths and the gods and goddesses and kind of understand all the elements that are going on in the stories. When we know this, we have a better understanding of why we use the gods and gods and gods and goddesses in rituals. And I have a better understanding of what they mean and how they can relate to our needs and how we can help them with their journey as well. In order for the gods to bless us, we have to do something with them for them. And that's relay the stories, make them alive, um, giving them um, offerings that are appropriate to modern time. Um, and just really recognition. Um, they don't want to die. They don't be forgotten just like anyone else. Um, and so it's a two way street. You, we have to work with them. They will lead us to work and our own passions in life. And we need to listen to them and follow that as well. So as you can see, there are a lot of Greek creatures, um, that we're going through here. Um, and some of them are, have quite interesting stories. Some of them are very interesting themselves. Um, and I, I love, you know, to know this stuff. Um, fawns, griffins, dragons, oribus. And then there's a little section here about fairies. Um, I don't really work with fairies, um, but I did take a class um, several places that actually you have to take a class on fairies to go through their process. Um, so I went ahead and did that. Um, I really don't connect with fairies. I don't believe in them. 
Um, I do believe in them. I just don't connect with them. Um, so it's nothing really I really focus on. And so the next section we go into Egypt and I kind of start out with Egyptian symbols. Um, you know, the Egyptian language is hieroglyphics, which is symbols. So it's always good to understand their symbols when you're looking at the art and information about the gods and goddesses. Um, so it's good to know about that. And again, um, I actually got this through a class I took. Um, and so it's always good to, to get an outside perspective. Um, so then we go to Matt. And then, then we have ancient Egypt. This is all of ancient Egypt as we knew it back in the time of the gods and goddesses. Uh, and then this talks about Isis. Um, I have not done a lot with the, the Egyptian Pantheon yet. Um, I do plan to. Um, as I want to learn more about ceremonial magic. And they have a great influence on ceremonial magic. So this is all Isis and Bast. And we have Matt. Again, I have worked with her a little bit. Hother. Good old Horus I. That's all I have in here for right now. And then we go to the Hindu Pathanon. And these are all the consorts. And then we have a map of ancient India and their family tree as best as you can print it out. It, that is very complicated. So then we have Brahma and Lord Shiva. And some of these pages may be hard to read again. I apologize. They're printed light on purpose so I can cover them in when I study them. And then we have the Lord Vishnu information about him we have Lakshmi which I do work with Lakshmi quite a bit um, I actually have a statue of her on my altar she will eventually go and have her own shrine for prosperity as well uh, but right now she's just on my altar uh, to keep things simple and we have Ganesh and some of these I've actually had on my altar and we have Tara. And there's Lakshmi again. Right. And then we go to the next section. And I have a section for American Indian information as I get it. This is actually uh, the chart for the American Indian tribes. <clears throat> And then we have White Buffalo Woman in here. And I would like to have more in here about American Indians. I just don't know who to put in here yet. And then we go to North Path Norse Pathion. And this just talks about the gods and goddesses. It has some calls and odes to them in here. Um, so I printed this off. I really like um, this information that I received on them. And I will be using it. And of course, again, that comes from a class as well that I took. Um, and here is the Norse map. And as you can see, it's nothing like modern day maps. And here is the Tree of Life. And when then we talk about the cosmetology, the Nine Realms, the K Kabbalah. And we have good old Odin, Odin. information about him, some great pictures. We have an ode to him. And then we have Frigg and Braggy, who I'm really looking forward to work with because he's music. And we have Frigga and Freya. And we have Thor, of course. You have to have Thor. And Balder. And Sif. So we have all these wonderful 
gods and goddesses that I want to really um, take some time and get to know too. So as you can see, a lot of this book is kind of um, even kind of a, a planning. Um, who are we going to research? Who are we going to learn about? You know, who's in my book? Who are we going to work with? And who have we? And this kind of keeps track of my thoughts and my experiences with working with all of them. And then we have another section here. And this is Ancient Samaria. So this would be known to modern, modern day Middle East. And I'm sorry, the map is not as very good. It's hard to find a real good map of the area in ancient time, um, especially with all the political influence right now. Um, it, it's just really hard to find something like that. So we're talking about Inanna right now. And there's some others that I would like to move into this section as well that are maybe tucked in a different section that really should be under there. And then we have an old map of China for the Chinese Pantheon. Um, and some of these, I'm not even going to try to um, pronounce some of these. Um, because until I learn them correctly, I just don't want to. But we have Quan, Quan Yin. And I do work with her very well. She is typically um, the goddess I choose to for my home altar. And I am looking for uh, a statue for her to place down there um, in the living room. That's where I keep my home altar. Um, it's a center of activity for the household. Um, and so she brings great peace and calm to the house, which is always important when you have a teenager in the house. All right. And then we have, um, this is a uh, meditation prayer I did on the Chinese elements, which are a little bit different than the pagan elements. Um, it includes wood and metal as an element. Um, so we have that. And we have some other gods and goddesses that I like to research in here as well. And like I said, a lot of these pictures came out of a coloring book um, that I've I'm going to utilize in this book as well. And as soon as the pages get filled up, these will all be filled up. There will be less, less waste than paper than what you see right now. So don't panic. It's all good information. And then we have South America, Central and South America. So now we're looking at the Mayans and Aztecs and the um, Incas as well. And some information about them how their influences affected everything um, and how some of them just disappeared off the face of the earth, which I find quite interesting too. So we have some more primarial type gods and goddesses in this section. And I find um, this culture very interesting. So we do have a few gods and goddesses we want to review and look at in here. All right, let's see what the section is. Ah, so then we have um, African. We have a section for Africa and their gods and goddesses. So I do have a section for them as well. We have Nana again as a, an African. Um, Yem, Yemma, so I hope I said that right. <laughs> Ocean. Water goddess. And so we have some wonderful gods and goddesses that I would really like to get to know and uh, work with. All right. So then let's look at this next section. Ah, and this section is Haiti. Good old Haiti. So you know what's coming now. This section will be full of voodoo gods and goddesses. Now, I don't practice voodoo or hoodoo, but I would like to have some background information on these gods and goddesses so they'll have a place in my book. Um, so I'll do some information, I'll do some research, uh, maybe do some connection work, um, but they won't be a primary god and goddess um, in my practice. Um, but I do believe it's important to know a wide variety from a lot of different places. 
And so here is another section. I believe this is uh, Korean or Russian. This might be Russian. So this is going to be um, Central Europe. Uh, around Russia, Poland, all that area. And so this is like gypsy stuff. So we have Baba Yaga. We have, this is another form of Mother Earth. And then we have a section on the Christian gods and goddesses. And now you're gonna say, what? Um, you know them as archangels. Uh, and then we have other angels that we're going to do uh, history information on as well. All right. And so then we go to, uh, I have a section in here with just regular everyday creatures and how they relate. And so we have bats and their superstitions. Um, and I'll add more as I use them. they will probably need to have spiders in here and just every common day things that we would use and connect with. I will probably only put in here what I connect with. So probably bats, ravens, um, uh, spiders, um, that nature, anything we normally would use in our ritual work um, and any um, animals that come into play. And so here's a lovely picture of a phoenix and dragon. And we should just be about done. Um, oh, yeah, I have, I threw my fairy portal in here in the back as well. It's kind of a gods and goddesses thing. Um, this is something that I did make. Um, in fact, it's hanging on my wall in my room. And it tells you a little story about the fairy portal and how it connected with me. Um, basically, on it, um, if you see the picture here, there is a black mirror, and that's how I connect. Um, it's more of a portal to the other side, to the veil, um, rather than just true um, fey connection. Again, I'm not a big uh, fey person, never will be. I don't think, um, I, I love the concept. Um, I have a lot of Celtic in my blood, uh, but fairies themselves really don't have that prominent connection. And then this is a new section I've started in my book. Um, these are sacred places, uh, places that are on my uh, bucket list, I guess you could say. And the first one is the CERN Abyss Giant. Extra dividers, the back cover, wonderful red and glittery. And again, my good old green man. So I hope you enjoyed this tour. And I hope that your day is full of all things magical.